Okay, hopefully this works. I'm just gonna try something. Hi, my name's Zoe. I am an author and children's book illustrator. I've done plenty of picture books, chapter books, you name it. And now I'm working on my first graphic novel. And I thought it'd be fun to kind of do a video time lapse, kind of explaining just how I how I paint stuff. I'm gonna start with just a character today. Uh, maybe perhaps I'll do a video regarding doing a landscape or something. Let me know if you're interested. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying the webcam, so we'll see how it turns out. <laughs> but uh, I, I'm gonna hopefully edit this and some parts will be sped up when I'm doing the work and then I'll stop when I'm explaining something. But I thought it'd be fun to kind of do like a little moth tender kind of character because I love Mothman. I've done the Mothman baby book and it's just such a fun, fun character to draw. So uh yeah let me just kind of explain i usually sketch using more of like a pencil texture type of brush uh this is a kyle webster animator brush but i kind of modified it just a little bit to add kind of more of like a canvas texture so that's usually my um uh, sketching layer kind of brush and then i'll show you once we get into it this is my painting brush it is a another modified Kyle Webster brush. I believe it's called Color Magic. I just kind of modified it a little bit towards my specifications, but you should be able to find the animator brush and the Color Magic on Adobe CC uh, for Photoshop and things like that. So I'm gonna get started and I'll explain my process. Uh, let's see, okay. So I'm thinking what I like to do with the Color Magic the nice thing about it is you work with both colors that are picked. So for example, the top is green and the bottom is orange. And if I do it, the lighter I tap, it's more orange, but the harder I press, it's more green. That's pretty neat, huh? And the cool thing is you can go to like color multiply and stuff like that. And wow, it just brings such a nice depth of what's going on here. And I usually work in CMYK, but because I know I'm not getting this like printed or anything, I, this is RGB. If you're doing anything printed, yeah, I guess you could start RGB, but I prefer to just start everything in CMYK. That way I know exactly what colors I'm printing. And another thing I wanna bring up uh, with picking colors, I have gamut warning on. This is pretty easy to turn on. I have CS6, so I know how to turn it on this way. And what you do is go to view and then gamut warning. So if I click it right now, it's gone. But if I click it again while the window is open, come on. There you go. Now I know what colors can be printed. Again, I'm working in RGB right now, so it doesn't really matter. But if I'm working in CMYK, this is a huge help, especially for printing and publishing and all that fun stuff. So what I am going to do, I realize I did this on the same layer. I'll name it sketch. And I like to do the sketch on the top layer. The bottom layer I usually do for painting. So what I'll do is lower the opacity and get started from there. Uh, there were, there was a time where I didn't have my tablet. So I did a lot of traditional art and I learned a lot from doing that. So I've been kind of implementing more traditional techniques of painting into my digital work. So it doesn't feel as digitally. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I am, I'm gonna keep that orange, but I'm gonna go kind of maybe a little bit warmer. I'm gonna basically do an underpainting, if that makes sense. So, and I'm gonna switch back to normal. Okay, so I got that base layer done kind of thing. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just trying to get a warm underpainting underneath. And we can kind of go from there. If we want to spice it up a little bit, yeah, like I'll do a little bit of color adjusting, get some warmth in here and some other places. I'll even throw in a little bit of like a green because that could be kind of interesting to have as an underpainting. See like how it just adds a little bit of interest Again, light, and then push to get the green. Okay, 
So now what I'm gonna do, <laughs> you're gonna think I'm crazy. I like to work with as minimal layers as possible. Again, it's like kind of treating it like a, a traditional painting basically. So I am going to start painting on top. And I'm trying to pick out skin colors that I think could go really nicely with this. And I'm not going too heavy with a hand, my hand right now, just something light. What I'm gonna do is, this is when I'll start applying more of like a linear burn or a color burn. Using the same colors, but it helps add some depth. I'll even go with a darker color. See if that even makes a difference. It's, I'm just trying to be kind of as loose as possible with this. Now I'll color in the eyes. We're gonna go back to the normal color layer. And usually if I'm just coloring something in, just like a straight up black, I'll usually pick two very similar colors to each other. But I like that color a lot. Just gonna add it a little bit around so I kind of stays harmonious. Okay, and then what I'll do, I'm gonna use multiply just to get some depth in here. I love color picking whatever random colors I get out of the bunch. Now, how I approach shadowing is more of a cool color family tone rather than warm. So I'm gonna kind of go with this like almost purpley, lavendery color with this like sea foamy kind of color. And I'm gonna put it on linear burn. Mm, I don't care for that. So I'm gonna go back to multiply. See, this is all trial and error. Okay, don't forget to save your work. Um, all right, I'm gonna show you a cool color combination that I've been really enjoying. I saw uh, one of my favorite uh, illustrators do this with uh, wat um, watercolors. Uh, I am gonna butcher her name because she's French. I almost would say Amélie, Amélie. But basically, if you wanna achieve a really nice kind of a darker shade of like a gray or a black, in, but you don't want to go straight into staying on the grayscale. Do like 
a dark red or like a burgundy color and like a dark green. And then you just kind of mix it up and it, it makes like a darker tone, but it has so much depth to it. It looks so pretty. I like to keep looser, like uh, smaller strokes to kind of help for add variety. And then I can color pick specific colors from that. And again, just like working on this, you can see that adding kind of the warmer undertone underneath makes such a huge difference. It just kind of, again, helps it warm up. Cause if you compare over here to over here, it looks so much cooler, which could have, you know, if that's the vibe you want to go for, totally cool. But I think I love the subtle warmness of having an underpainting does. Okay, now we have kind of the base color down. So I'll kind of, you know, switch between looking at the sketch and all that good stuff. And now the sketch is just basically a little bit left of a guide just to help me come up with where I want specific um, details and so on and so forth. So I'm just gonna basically keep pushing the shading and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, I'll let you know if I think of anything else to say. <laughs> I wanted to add, I like doing color dodge if I know I'm not gonna be worrying about printing or anything like that. Color dodge is just a really fun way to, look at that, look at, look at that color. Beautiful. All right, this is when I'm gonna start introducing the uh, pencil. I'm gonna up the flow, get a little thicker. And that's just my detail brush, basically. Just like my sketching br brush, it is my detail brush, does exactly what it needs to do.
Now, I kind of wanted to briefly talk about this, where uh, how do you go about separating two characters or a character from a background where they're very similar colors? And I've struggled with this for a long time. Basically, what I've come up with the best solution is after kind of color blobbing everything around, I like to make as much separation look as natural as possible. So I'm color picking these lighter colors. And I'm kind of working around the edges. So I don't have to do like a straight up harsh line or anything. And it helps read the separation. They're on different, uh, I don't want to say different planes, but they're, you know they're separated by just how I'm treating the colors right now. It's about using color theory to your advantage. <laughs> you, you can do either cool to tones or warm tones, it doesn't really matter. I like to make sure it just kind of stays in the same family. Don't want to steer too far away. See, now you can kind of, you can see their little feetsies. <laughs> Heck, you can even like take colors that are much lighter and just gently put it in to help with the separation too. As long as you're using colors that are already in the piece, it's gonna look more seamless than you think. I don't know if seamless, but it blends in. It's your, what's the word I'm looking for? It's improvising. Now I'm gonna start kind of erasing around and cleaning things up and we're almost good to go. You know what you can also do? You can also go to, on your brush settings to make the eraser that you want. Go to clear and I'll take that brush. I should have been doing this at the beginning, but you could just use the brush as an eraser. Wow. And again, we're not striving for perfection here because the more you try to make it look perfect, the more digital it's gonna look. Again, that's just kind of the look I'm going for. I'm trying to go for a more looser painterly look. You can do whatever method you want to do. Whatever floats your boat.
Now in this stage, I am kind of treating it like, you know how you're taught in art class of to, if you want to add weight to something, you go a little bit thicker in the line work. I'm taking that idea where I'm not doing line work exactly, but the areas where I want it to feel a little bit heavier, I'll take a color that I picked out of here, make it slightly darker and I just start adding details. And I don't do it everywhere. I just kind of do it in the areas where I feel like it would benefit, kind of help with the silhouette. Because if I do it everywhere, then it's gonna start to look like line work and that's not what we're trying to achieve here. See how it kind of helps bring details together without going, you still get that painterly look. This still needs some work, but you can, you can tell a difference. Just adding little brush strokes like this, just again adds like, it's like treating it like color pencils. You, you're just adding little fun details on top to kind of add some interest and it kind of helps clean things up. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, so I'm gonna save. Any last minute details I'll do, uh, I like to, let's say, take this color and I'll go see how it looks under a color dodge. That looks pretty sick. I'm gonna utilize that for extra details and stuff like that. So I kind of like to do this like cloud thingy. Like almost smoky. Actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I don't think that shows up as bright as I'd like. So I'm just gonna go with the regular normal. Helps add some interest. And again, we're not trying to strive for perfection or anything. <laughs> Fancy. Cool, I think that looks sick. So, saving once again. Oh, I keep seeing little things I need to fix. Okay, same once more. I personally like the colors I ended up with, but if I wasn't feeling something, I would play with levels. If I wanted to go that way. This is a very popular, like I, I like doing it this way too, just to see if I need to up, which I'll go back and forth. There's something charming about not going super saturated. I think what I'll do, that's a tough call. I'm just gonna go ever so slightly. And then 
this is another one I like to use, the color balance. So usually if I'm really trying to emphasize any reds or anything, I'll do it in the highlight color and then shadows, I'll usually do more. Again, it really just depends on what kind of mood you're feeling. Oh, see, this is a tough call, folks. Um, I'm personally more the fan of just the simple greens and oranges and reds. So I think I'm gonna keep it as is. And I'll just sign it. And when you look at that, it's basically just two layers. How neat is that? And I'll do a background on a separate layer and so on and so forth. But uh, yeah, that's basically my painting process. So I'll just kind of go over, again, detail brush, color. No, this is animator. Pencil. And then this one is color magic, which I'll switch to. Both of these you could find, again, I modified these ones a little bit, but you can find the originals in, uh, you know, Adobe Photoshop CC. I use CS6, um, so I just still have those brushes from a long time ago that I've kept. But these have been what I've been liking lately. So I hope you like it. Let me know if uh, you like me to see see me do something else or whatever. Trying to make room, time between doing graphic novel stuff or whatever. But yeah, hope you like it. Bye, y'all. Have a nice day. <laughs>